Okay, there's just a few things I want to cover before we uh, send you off to all your individual coaches. Um, number one thing is the chain of command. Um, throughout the course of the season, sometimes there are issues, uh, and when those happen, we just want to make sure that everybody's going through the proper steps uh, to make sure everything gets done right. The very first thing that always needs to happen is the player needs to talk to the coach. Okay? Um, if I ever get a call or if we ever have a call, the very first thing is going to ask, did, did they talk to the coach? Okay? A lot of times uh, that can solve the issues right there. Uh, maybe it just might be a uh, communication issue, but that's always going to be number one. After that, uh, the parent can speak with the coach, um, but this, uh, there's a few things that, that just won't be talked about. Uh, number one is uh, other kids. Okay, playing time and other kids. Uh, if you want to know what it's going to take, or the player wants to know what it's going to take to get on the field more, they need to ask the coach. Okay, uh, and then the other kids. You know, if uh, if the questions are why is, is somebody else playing in front of my son or daughter, that just can't be talked about. Our coaches know that, and uh, it's just it's in our handbook. And that's the way it's got to be. Finally, if, if there still are any issues, or uh, it's not all resolved after that, you can contact me. Uh, if we have to, we can set up a meeting and get everything figured out from there. Uh, a few things I took out of an article uh, where it talked about the parent's role in activities. Uh, I thought it was a great article. It had some great stuff in there. The number one thing was be positive. These kids got four years to compete in high school athletics. Uh, a lot of their memories uh, are going to be dependent on the parents also. Whether they were positive, they were supported, um, they allowed them to have fun in these activities. So please be positive. Be supportive, like I said. Uh, it had a little, a little excerpt in there that said, be a fan, not a fanatic. Cheer your kids on, cheer the York Dukes on, uh, be a fan of everything that's going on, but don't be a fanatic. Enjoy the experience. Like I said, four years, it's going to be over in the blink of an eye. Uh, we talk to parents all the time and say, I can't believe we're done already. I can't believe it's been four years. Really enjoy the experience. Enjoy every, uh, every game, every activity in the entire way. Um, have a good time with it. Sportsmanship, some other stuff I took out of there. Uh, be a good sport at all times. We preach to our kids constantly about being a good sport. That means going into other people's place, respecting their things. Um, when they come here, treating them with respect, um, officials, all of that. Um, we ask that parents and students alike are uh, great sports at all times. Losing's hard, all right? Nobody likes to lose. And I promise any, uh, any kid I ever coach or any coach I've ever been with, they know I don't like to lose either. It's hard. Um, a lot of characters are revealed when you lose. Please make sure when those emotions are uh, high after a loss that we control ourselves and uh, conduct ourselves the way that the York do should. Uh, poor behavior from parents won't be tolerated. We have a very good reputation. Uh, you know, I've talked to some other ADs around the state, um, different coaches around, and they all say that York represents themselves very well. Let's please keep it that way. Uh, let's make sure that we're cheering on our, our student athletes and uh, our reputation remains the same here at York. It's a great, great place to be. Okay. Uh, this one's very, very important. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this because I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page when it comes to eligibility. The last thing we want is for um, a student athlete not to be able to play because of a miscommunication or, uh, excuse me, a miscommunication or we didn't understand how the policy worked. So the first thing, the very first three weeks of every quarter will not count. Every student in York will be eligible for the first three weeks of every quarter. During that time, the reason is so our, our grades can accumulate. We don't want the very first week some uh, uh, a kid to fail one, uh, one assignment, so they're ineligible for a week. This gives them a chance to establish three, four, or five grades. That way, if they're failing, you know, they've probably earned it after three weeks. Weeks four through nine of each quarter, the policy is in effect, okay? During that time, if you're a student is failing two classes, they are ineligible from Monday to Sunday. All right, so at 9 a.m. every Monday, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to check every student's grade in the entire school. If they're failing two classes, they will be ineligible from that point on Monday morning until the following Sunday. With one exception, 
one time each semester they're allowed in a grace period. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use Blake Woodruff. Blake's never got a B in his life, much less failed, so I know I'm safe here. If Blake had two failing classes on week four of the quarter, I'm going to call him into the office and I'm going to tell him, you are on your grace week. So if he's failing two classes, any of the rest of the weeks of the quarter, he will be ineligible. This happens one time a semester only, okay? Um, that's just kind of, if it's sort of a fluke deal, it gives the kid a chance to raise their grade, um, sort of a warning. That's once a semester, not once a quarter, so we're all on the same page with that. Um, anytime, uh, the first time, every time a kid gets on a grace period, I'll call them in and I'll talk to them personally. The first time that they're ineligible, I will call them in and I will talk to them personally. After that, they will go to the attendance office. Um, I'll have them sign off saying that they received a slip of paper that will uh, tell them that they are ineligible for the week. It'll let them know what they need to be doing, uh, or excuse me, it'll tell them they're ineligible for the week. Uh, and also let them know that they're going to have to go to our Wednesday homework lab. This is a new thing that we're doing this year. If you are ineligible on Wednesdays, you will not, a student will not be able to leave at 2 o'clock. They will be in our homework lab with certified teachers from 2.10 to 3.20. Um, we experimented a little bit last year, if you guys remember, with the uh, lunch study hall. And what we found is we just didn't quite allow enough time in order for them to bring up their grades. Because by the time they're eating and working, it just didn't quite work out as well as we'd hoped. So what we're going to do is uh, they'll have that hour and 10 minutes. They will be the certified teachers, um, probably uh, probably in our uh, study hall area, the gym commons. They'll have access to computers, and they'll allow them an hour or so to work on the grades that they're failing, get themselves up, and get them eligible for the following week. Um, this is very important. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with the eligibility policy. Um, in addition, you guys will be contacted by mail every time your student is on a grace period or ineligible. Okay, so Blake is grace period week four, ineligible weeks five, six, seven, eight, nine. You will see, receive a letter in the mail every single one of those weeks. Okay. Um, another big thing going on in the state of Nebraska right now is concussions. Um, they actually just passed a law, um, the Concussion Awareness Act, uh, Concussion Awareness Act, that requires that three different parties know um, the severity and how concussions work. One is the athlete, two is the coach, and three are the parents. By law, we now have to educate all three of those groups um, as a school district. Um, every one of your kids has taken the impact concussion test. What this does, it establishes a baseline. Um, it, it tests their, uh, their brain, essentially, and uh, it establishes a baseline. If they are showing concussion-like symptoms, we will then retest them on that exact same, uh, with the exact same test. If they're substantially worse, it'll show us that they have some sort of brain trauma going on. Um, Chuck Bowen is our uh, certified trainer here at York High School. He is kind of our concussion guy. He's the one that has done all the concussion testing, um, uh, in addition to Lincoln Orthopedics been out to do that. He is certified to do all the tests. He will be able to um, administer it uh, we will then send it off to some doctors and they will read the results. Um, parents, there will be lots of different things going out to you in a lot of different avenues to help you uh, understand concussions a little bit better. We'll send some stuff out in the newsletters. We'll try to send some stuff out in the mail. Um, we might have some stuff hanging around during events. So um, read those. I, I'd encourage you to read them just so you're aware. Uh, a lot of times we see a kid for 30 minutes or an hour, you know, at the end of practice, you get to see them for 12 hours at home. So you might be able to see some things that we're not. We definitely don't want anybody to uh, go out and, and play football and have a concussion or softball or anything else. Okay, uh, the hidden gem of York High School, I call it. I've had several parents call and they ask, how do I find the schedule? I want to know when the volleyball teams, what can I do? If you go to our main website, so just yorkpublic.org, you scroll down about halfway down, on the left-hand side of the screen, you're going to see a Duke head that says York High Sports. Click on that. When you click on that, it will bring up a calendar, 
Um, in addition, on the right-hand side of the calendar, it will list every single uh, sport, every single activity in the entire school. So if you want to know seventh grade volleyball, it's on there. If you want to know varsity softball, it's on there. When you click on that, you click view, and it will show you every single event that we have, the location, um, the time, and all of that. Everything that we do at York is on there. If there's a change, so uh, I, I found out today that we had a change to our Navy volleyball schedule, it's on there. All right, so if you're ever wondering, want to check it, um, yorkpublic.org, scroll halfway down, Click on the do kit that says York High Sports. Um, that'll bring you to a calendar, and everything you ever want to know is on there. Okay? That is it. That's all I've got for this meeting. Um, I do want to make sure and give our individual coaches plenty of time. They got lots of good things to say in their individual meetings. Uh, I've put the rooms up here so you can look at them. Tennis will be in room 124, uh, which is Miss Holder's room. So you'd have to go out to your right, down the hall, take a left, room 124. Uh, cross country is in the vocal room, which is just right next door to us. Girls golf is in Mr. Miller's room. So if you walk out the door, go down the left hallway, all the way on the end, uh, just a little bit to the right. Volleyball is in the gym commons on the opposite end. Softball will stay here in the theater, and cheerleading will be in the library. Now, before you guys go, are there any questions Especially on the concussions, the eligibility policy, the calendar. Are there any questions? Thank you guys very much. Thank you.